Welcome back to Customer Tech Talks. My name is Ben Walters, and this is where you'll hear real stories from real customers sharing real learnings. This time we're joined by Evan Paff from the city and county of Denver. Let's jump straight in and have a look at what they're doing. My name is Evan Paff. I'm the digital transformation engineer for the city and county of Denver. The city and county of Denver serves approximately 750,000 residents, and we're part of a 10 county metro area that serves approximately 3 million residents. As the digital transformation engineer, my job is to help city employees utilize technology to be more efficient in their jobs. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, this came into play when we had to virtualize our emergency operations center to allow our city leaders to run the city while sheltering in place. We virtualize our emergency operations center using Microsoft Teams and SharePoint workflows in Azure to help it run smoothly and to continue to serve our citizens. Evan, great to have you with us today. Thanks, Ben. It's an honor to share Denver's story. Now, I can't imagine what was going through your head as the digital transformation engineer when the shelter-in-place order was issued. Can you tell us a little bit about the Emergency Operations Center, what its purpose is, and what happens when a state of emergency is declared? So our Emergency Operations Center is a room in the basement of our city and county building that is activated whenever there's a citywide emergency. So that might be uh, an apartment fire, it might be a blizzard, it might be a flood. Um, but basically, it's an area where all of our city leaders can congregate in order to run the city um, in, in, a, in a small area. So historically, the EOC has been, as you said, a very kind of paper-based and manually run. How did you approach digitizing the process and what technology did you use to support residents during the pandemic? So when the COVID-19 pandemic happened and our mayor issued our shelter in place, we had to move from a paper and pencil process to a digital process because we couldn't have, you know, 100 city leaders inside this small confined space. So what we did was we took the requirements that the federal government has and we worked with our Office of Emergency Management, our OEM team, and we converted all of those processes basically in a weekend from our paper and, paper and pencil process to digital. Now, I remember working with customers many years ago in, in a past life doing a similar work, digitizing workflows and, and doing those kind of things. And it's a really challenging process. And the fact that you managed to do the bulk of this work in over a weekend is actually nothing short of amazing. Did you have any other additional requirements or things you needed to deal with while you were trying to digitize this manual process? Yeah, so first off, like I said, there are federal guidelines that we have to follow in order to get you know things like reimbursements from the, from the feds for the work that we're doing. Um, but also we had to train a lot of our users who are used to that paper and pencil process and, and may not be information workers and may not be used to being in front of a computer all day. So we had to train them on how to use the tools. So outside of actually digitizing it um, and virtualizing it, we then had to do a training exercise as well. Right. So historically, how long does it usually take you to set up the EOC and, and how does that differ to now with the new digitized form, the digitized process? So under normal circumstances, before we went virtual, um, the EOC, we had all the paper and pencils, you know, ready to go and everybody knew what to do. So it was a pretty quick turnaround. Um, what we've done, though, is because of the efficiency and the effectiveness of the digital and virtual um, emergency operations center, we're going to move forward to be an online EOC from now on. So that doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to be at home at the EOC. Once this pandemic is done and people can, can all be in the same room, they would still go back to the emergency operations center, but they're going to use these tools that we've built in order to um, run the EOC effectively from here on out. Wow. Really impressive work that you've done there to be able to manage to do this and also have that ability to provision at the click of a button. Before we finish, what's one lesson or something you've learned during this process that you'd share for others who are looking to do a similar thing or automate their own processes within their business? So I think the most effective thing that we did was to fill out, so we were using Nintex forms, Nintex workflows, um, Microsoft Teams was the um, communications platform that we were using in the, in the document repository. But using these Nintex forms, we were able to pre-populate a lot of the fields, um, activation name, activation number, user name, you know, information like that. Um, and so doing that, pre-populating a lot of these things to where 
um, you know, our end users entering the data didn't have to go back or remember certain things. That made everything a lot better, streamlined all of our processes. Right, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us, Evan. Next up, we have Jake and Lucas from the Seattle Visiting Nurse Association. Let's have a quick look at what they're doing. Hi, my name is Jake Scherf. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Seattle Visiting Nurse Association, a small family business local to Seattle in business since 2009. We focus in providing seasonal immunization clinics for our clients from government agencies to businesses, both large and small, schools and community events. With the challenges facing us from COVID-19, we decided to set up a new type of clinic in a drive through fashion. Patients can register online, visit our clinic sites and be immunized right in their vehicle. Typically, it's just 90 seconds from arrival to departure and it's a seamless process with low contact. The risk from COVID-19 has really amplified the need for flu shots this year. The CDC has let us know that you can get both COVID-19 and the flu at the same time. And we wanna make sure that we protect our healthcare systems from COVID as well as from the flu. With the help of our development partner, Signetic, we were able to use Microsoft Power Platform to design a software that increases the ease of use for our patients. Consistent feedback at our drive through clinics has shown that the experience has become easier and met their needs during the COVID-19 pandemic. Jake, Lucas, great to have you with us. Hey, Ben, thanks for having us. Great to be here, Ben. So Jake, SVNA has been around since 2009. You're one of the community's biggest immunizers in Washington state, and you protected over 40,000 people last year alone. With flu season upon us this year, how are you approaching things differently given the current situation? Well, you know, COVID-19 has really changed everything for us. Um, our traditional points of care are in office spaces uh, and school districts, government agencies, and obviously with everybody working from home and kids out of school, uh, we've had to change our operations and we only had a couple months to do it. Um, also, traditionally, we've been uh, paper based. So, you know, when we reached out to Signetic to start this digital transformation, we knew we were going to need to completely redesign our business model to meet our patients in the field. Um, that's where the idea for these drive through clinics came from. Um, so now with our new custom software implementation, patients can register online for an appointment, pick any one of our number of sites, uh, show up with their entire family and be vaccinated right in their vehicle. Uh, it, it's really been a huge success for us in such a short amount of time. That's great to hear. So, but it wasn't also just the clinics, the physical experience, but the way you scheduled appointments and process patient data changed as well. Lucas, Signetic was brought in to help SVNA address these changes. Can you tell us about how you started to approach this? Uh, we had a great opportunity to imagine what SVNA could be from, from scratch. We chose Power Platform as our a development tool because it gave us everything all at once. We had mobile tablets for clinicians to use on site so that their team of nurses could act as a pit crew for, uh, for patients coming in uh, in the drive through clinics. We had patient registration web app that provided patients a modern experience for scheduling. On the back end, we use CDS and model-driven applications so that their admins can manage the entire workflow. And we got to use uh, Power Automate to make everything connected and seamless. That's great. And a really great kind of experience end-to-end -end there as well. Now, I know within the medical industry, one of the biggest considerations is this idea of HIPAA compliance and how you work with patient data. Can you give me a little bit of an idea, Jake, on how you approach this and how you manage to meet those requirements? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, as a healthcare provider, protecting our patient's information is, is really a top priority for us. Um, you know, in the past, we had our old systems, uh, but now with this digital experience, uh, we really, you know, the, one of the first things we talked to our development team about was, you know, how are we going to protect this information now that it's on the web um, and, and maybe a little bit more susceptible. And I think Lucas can talk a little bit more about, you know, why Power Platform was the right choice for us. Uh, HIPAA is a one part business practice and one part technology. Because we're using Power Platform, we get Microsoft 365, CDS, Healthcare Accelerator. And so being HIPAA compliant from a technology side was an implementation step and not a custom 
development process. So we were very confident being able to go in and have everything in place from day one. Right, and the turnaround for developing a solution like this is crazy, especially considering you started in late July and, and now you're in production in September, you've got this thing up and running and going ahead. Um, can you share a little bit for both of you actually on this one, anything you've learned from the development cycle and even the way this has impacted nurses who are on site and how they're interacting? Yeah, absolutely. So you're right, uh, two months is a really fast timeline. Um, that's about the same amount of time when we realize, you know, hey, this pandemic's going to go on into the fall. Nobody's going to be at work. Nobody's going to be in school. And we really have about 60 days to turn everything around or, you know, really be at risk. Um, so I just learned a lot of patience, you know, working with the nurses, working with our staff. Everything is all changing and it's happening really rapidly. So, you know, just being patient with everyone and, and trying to guide them through it um, has been something that I've really learned from this experience. SVNA is a model, a model um, company for digital transformation. They've had the vision and leadership to make a big, bold move. And so for us, that's given us a lot of freedom to be able to jump in, explore, and iterate. Traditional development is on a two-week time scale for sprints. With Power Platform, we turn that into two days because we can get feedback, iterate, deploy, get feedback. And this allows us to get the biggest uh, time speed up. Awesome. Really, really impressive. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to find out more information about how to get started with any of the technology you, we've discussed here, you can check the links below or you can head over to microsoft.com slash learn and be sure to check back throughout the event for more customer tech talks. Checkpoint has some great security